Major change sweeping through for many as a fall-like cold front pushes through. Meanwhile, the Atlantic continuing to likely heat up through the first half of August. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this final day of July, the 31st and a Thursday. And they're going to start off Friday with a new month and a weekend with a new month. And I'm ready for it, especially with this front working on through that's likely going to make it feel a lot more like fall than summer for a lot of us, or at least the start of fall, we'll say. Uh, about as fall as you could probably get to start off August. Definitely good timing. I think once we get to August, most people are probably done with summer and uh, getting ready to kind of pull out those fall decorations. And you might want to by this weekend as things start to feel a lot better outside. Also going to talk about the tropics. Uh, we're still seeing signals of the first half of August could begin to heat on up. And I know it might sound like a broken record. I've been talking about it for a while, but uh, if you've been watching for a while, I said it wouldn't even probably happen till the start of August. And I'm still holding with that uh, thinking. I definitely think the first two weeks of August look to be uh, a time frame worth watching in the Atlantic. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. And if you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications so you're up to date with the always changing data and my analysis of that data. All right, folks, let's dive on into it today and start by looking at satellite imagery. We're going to start with uh, the lower 48 today and then save the tropics for the end of the video. Just felt like switching it up a little bit. So uh, here we go. And if you kind of take a close look, you're going to see this transport of energy kind of down out of Canada. And then obviously this big area out in front of that transport where storms are beginning to fire up. We've got a frontal system working on through, sure enough. Uh, and uh, as you would expect, it's kind of parked where that energy is meeting with this more tropical summer-like air mass and firing up some of those storms. So uh, I would say uh, definitely weather wise kind of time frame here, we're going to have some flooding potential, some severe weather potential with this as this front works on through. Some folks going to hang on to that flooding potential, even as the front is still kind of lingering into the weekend and into early next week. And some folks, Charlotte included, where I'm recording this from and go Niners, by the way, uh, we can have a really nice week ahead, at least in terms of temperatures could be a lot nicer than it was this past week where we had record breaking heat for multiple days in a row. Now, what's happening out there right now? Well, uh, with this front working on through, you can see rainfall increasing uh, up into the northeast from Boston up to um, Portland over to Albany, Binghamton, Scranton, and even all the way back into Erie and Cleveland. And then an area of heavier rainfall, storminess, and flooding going on right now from uh, New York City up through Newark, down through really much of Jersey into portions of Delaware, uh, Maryland, and then uh, you can see these... Uh, uh, let's see, yellow boxes are severe thunderstorm warnings, which will change by the time many of you are watching this. But you get the point. Uh, yeah, pretty good feisty area of storms here and a severe thunderstorm watch continuing for this part of the country till I believe 8 p.m. tonight. So definitely going to need to watch out for that. Uh, meanwhile, storms getting going down south as well. And you'll notice this is the only place having those heat advisories left. Another hot one today, but by tomorrow and onward, uh, yeah, these afternoon storms are going to definitely begin to cool us down and already seeing some of those impacts out there right now. Alrighty, let's go ahead now and take a look at uh, some model data, show you where this pattern's going and uh, how it's going to lead to that nicer air mass by the time we get on into this weekend. Hide Anomaly Map, a great tool to use this time of year whenever we're trying to find a pattern change, and that's exactly what we have right now. Uh, last week, if you'll uh, remember, all these oranges and reds were over the eastern half of the country. That's why we had that big heat wave. Now, seeing a bit of a dip in the jet stream, and honestly, folks, that looks to continue. Check this out. By the time we even get into early next week, an unsettled pattern as troughing works down into the eastern United States. That's a recipe for cooler and more active weather, so uh, that means uh, some storminess, showers, and definitely temperatures below average, especially for the Mid-Atlantic and down into the Carolinas, where a kind of a pseudo cold air damming like setup is going uh, to set up shop uh, by the time we head on into this weekend. So that's why things are going to be a little bit more quiet. Meanwhile, uh, out west, going to see some troughing as well. That could once again bring more severe weather to the plains. I'm tired of talking about it. You're tired of hearing about it. So uh, that's really all I'm going to say about that. If you want a more in-depth forecast, definitely tune into your local meteorologist. Um, and it's uh, nothing against folks out there. I just know that uh, it's been ongoing. It's not going to stop. And uh, I have a very small viewer base out into the middle of uh, the fields of Montana. So, you know, going to save most of the energy here for east of the Rockies. But uh, definitely you could see that uh, troughing in the east looks to continue through at least the next seven days or so. Uh, so I don't think this is going to be a quick shot of we'll call it cooler air. Uh, I definitely think this could be an extended time frame of a more um, a fall like of an atmosphere. And again, I say fall like kind of loosely. It's not going to be, you know, 75 with a crisp breeze or anything, but uh, compared to summer like weather, it's probably going to be uh, more on the fall side than anything else. All right, let's time this out for you over the next little bit. We've got rainfall on the way. Now, watch for flooding. That is going to be a concern. I already showed you 
Uh, that flooding potential up into New Jersey in the Mid-Atlantic. Uh, yeah, that's going to continue into this evening. Even up north, we could see flooding. Down south, we could see flooding with these afternoon storms. You're basically anywhere on this map that you see rain on the way. Be weather-wise that you could see a flooding concern and a bit of a severe weather risk concern as well, although not overly uh, high on that. Now, overnight tonight, rain continuing into New England. This is by 3 a.m. I-95 from Boston back down to New York City. Still raining pretty good, so you understand why flooding is a concern now. You get hours on hours on hours of kind of these trends raining storms. Uh, yeah, that's a recipe for some flooding and kind of being brought by this little bit of a kink in the atmosphere, getting some low pressure going down at the surface, uh, tracking through this area, definitely increasing those rainfall chances. Now, uh, we'll keep it going ahead into time and uh, get a little bit of a breakdown into the southeast uh, tonight. Uh, but by the time we get to Friday afternoon, yeah, our own little area of low pressure firing up a big corridor of storms uh, from Virginia all the way back down into Mississippi, Louisiana, into the Gulf states. Uh, I think pretty widespread thunderstorm action. Uh, if you tuned in recently or you watched me this past week and I talked about this, the forecast hasn't changed much in that uh, side of things. Friday looks pretty wet from Virginia down into the Carolinas and like I said, all through the Gulf Coast states. Now, up north, check out the Midwest. Boy, oh boy, what a nice Friday to start off August. Uh, if you're watching up into Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, uh, up through the Rust Belt. Yeah, that's really nice weather there for the start of August and on that Friday uh, coming up tomorrow. Uh, but uh, down south, yeah, flooding still going to remain that concern. A little bit of severe weather embedded in it as well for our Friday evening. Uh, and that just keeps on coming. And uh, you can see by the time we get to Saturday afternoon, it's as far out as the model goes. This is a pretty classic cold air damming setup. We've got this big high pressure up into the Great Lakes. Some of that high pressure trying to just uh, wrap down south. But what happens is some of that cooler, drier air gets on the eastern side of the Appalachia chain, which pretend this is the Appalachia chain there in pink, which, uh, you know, I would say it's pretty good drawing, right? Not bad. Uh, but some of that cooler, dry air, what happens is it gets stuck up here and it can't really go around the mountains or over the mountains, I should say. Uh, so what happens is it kind of hits the mountains and just keeps scooting its way south and scooting its way south. And eventually uh, this leads to a shallow pocket of cooler air uh, down over portions of uh, Virginia, the Carolinas, and even sometimes if it's super strong, uh, can get down into Georgia as well. And that's the pattern that looks to set up by the time we get on into Saturday and Sunday. Now, as that's happening, though, still energy down near the Gulf. That's going to keep throwing warm, moist air over this cat, as we call it. And that could lead to a pretty cloudy, showery time frame here uh, for portions of the Carolinas, Virginia, and Georgia. So going to need to watch out for that. And uh, you'll see that here as we switch on over and take a look at a couple other models. The muggy meter showing it pretty well. You can see that beautiful, nice, wonderful air mass here north of the Ohio River Valley up into New England. Uh, like I said, the Great Lakes, what a beautiful Friday on store for your uh, day tomorrow. Down south, though, this front's still working on through. So this is why Friday looks like uh, a day we need to watch for some flooding and severe weather in that pink circled area on your map. Front working through, that's our lifting mechanism. Uh, plenty of surface moisture and very high P watt anomalies, meaning there's a lot of water that these storms can ring out. Uh, now, that's for your Friday. Let's keep on going into your Saturday uh, and show you that uh, muggy meter. Still pretty muggy down uh, towards the Gulf Coast, Louisiana, not getting really much relief. Southern Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, down into Florida, uh, even the Midlands and Low Country, South Carolina still look pretty muggy on your Saturday. But notice Charlotte, kind of uh, 85 northbound here, uh, getting some drier air to filter in with that cold air damming. And by the time we're getting into Sunday morning, uh, yeah, a lot of us going to try to get a little push of some nicer air. You can see it there in Charlotte, dew point down into the lower 60s. Columbia, not nice per se, but maybe nicer than it has been. Not bad up into Raleigh and then Virginia northbound. Uh, I would consider that pretty pleasant air for this time of year. How long is it going to last? Well, notice it kind of hangs around, filters down for a while. We start to steam back up into the plains and up into the Midwest a little bit more uh, by early next week. Not bad, but uh, you definitely see some of that more moist air working in. And I think by next Wednesday, Thursday, uh, most of us going to be in on that moisture again, at least uh, the muggy air part of it. Meanwhile, a little bit of dry air probably going to hang around here through portions of the Appalachia chain. So enjoy that uh, while it lasts. But on top of that, and this front crossing and kind of getting caught up a little bit, like I said, rain chance is going to be on the rise. We'll pick it up uh, here for your Saturday afternoon where we left off. And uh, here we go. Like I said, a pretty rainy time frame down into the Gulf from the Midlands of South Carolina down to the Low Country, all through the Gulf Coast region. Uh, it looks to be a pretty wet pattern here for the weekend. This is Saturday. Notice kind of the Virginias and the uh, Ohio uh, River Valley northbound uh, looking really good, honestly, for your Saturday, but it's south of there towards the Gulf. Uh, it's going to have higher in rain chances. Now, keep it going into Sunday. That CAD continuing, uh, continuing to bring cloudy conditions through the Carolinas, rainy conditions down south into the Low Country, down through 
southern Georgia, Florida Panhandle, and surrounding areas. Uh, and then by the time we keep on going, some of that energy tries lifting north and heavy rain, trying to work back up into the Carolinas there by your Monday, Tuesday. Still pretty dry into the northeast and uh, midwest, uh, but really just unsettled down into the southeast. Looks to be the hot spot over the next five days. And uh, that uh, looks to be uh, really the big story, I would say, coming up in this pattern. Now, temperatures with this uh, also going to be a bit nicer. Notice tomorrow, below average for many of us across the country. And you get just a little bit below average after being well above average. That's a huge swing. And that's going to make these slightly below average temperatures probably feel a lot better than if it had been uh, just right around average recently. And notice, uh, by the time we keep this going... Uh, this is Saturday afternoon. I mean, we're talking 10, 15 degrees below average down into portions of the Carolinas uh, due to that uh, cloudy and uh, just dreary like conditions for a lot of us there for your Saturday. It's going to be the most fall like weather we've seen uh, so far this summer. And look at Sunday, more of the same. In fact, let's take a quick sounding down here into Georgia and uh, see what we're working with. Yeah, surface temperatures might not hit 75 for some of us if you combine the cold air getting funneled in at the surface, that cloud cover on top. Oh boy, oh boy, it might be pumpkin spice weather here uh, for the weekend for some of us. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't say that lightly. I myself might have to take a trip out to the store and get some ingredients to bake something up. Who knows? Uh, but uh, that keeps on going there into your Sunday. And uh, notice by Monday, too, the CAD, this is a pattern that you often see, this uh, not this time of year, but other times of the year. Uh, it's just getting locked into the Carolinas and Virginia. Like I said, fall-like weather, really going to lock in and uh, below average temperatures really for much of the week ahead, looking to be a pretty high level likelihood. Final thing I'll show you in this segment are rainfall totals uh, before we take a look at the tropics and um yeah, this is the downside. A lot of rain, especially low country South Carolina, down into southern Georgia, Florida Panhandle, uh, out towards coastal North Carolina, uh, and then obviously getting rain right now up into this area of the Northeast, but that'll be out of here by you know, tomorrow uh, and especially by your Saturday. But it's down south. The Carolinas, uh, especially the coastal sections of the Carolinas, Georgia, and down into southern Alabama and the Florida Panhandle, I'm watching for flooding potential out of this pattern. All righty, folks, switch on over now, take a quick look at the tropics, and then let you go. Well, this is the latest from the Climate Prediction Center, and notice, uh, again, I know I've been talking a lot about it, we haven't gotten a name storm yet, but uh, the experts are also watching kind of the same areas I've been telling you about. Through uh, the first week of August into the second week, it's kind of that section off the southeast coastline we've been mentioning, and then once we get closer to about 10 or so days from now, uh, we're going to watch for a wave back out into the main development region. Now, I'll start this by saying uh, there's no home run slam dunk storm I see on the way. And uh, I've mentioned that there's not been necessarily uh, one exact time frame, but it's just the first bit of August in general that I think is going to be favorable. And uh, I know the models have kind of backed off a little bit from when we last talked, but still uh, we look at the uh, pattern here. And if I can get the map switched over, uh, you can see that this is the GFS model still showing some of that energy uh, associated with this front getting going off the uh, East Coast and then trying to pull out to see wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, the GFS ensembles now hinting at another wave right around 10 days from now. And I know I'm starting to sound like the boy who cried wolf, the current wave uh, that we were talking about. It doesn't really look to be doing much of anything, to be completely honest with you. But uh, the GFS definitely. Definitely hinting at another wave by uh, right around 10 or so days from now. Let's see if we've got the latest European ensembles. It looks like we do. Uh, so you can see also around 10 days from now on the European ensembles also showing something in that same general vicinity. Now, obviously, this is not... Um, like I said, a slam dunk forecast. We're not guaranteed to get a storm, but the conditions do continue to look more favorable than they have been. And you can see that here on the European Ensemble, still showing increasing moisture content. Here's that current wave we've been talking about, still there, still trying to turn into something, just kind of struggling with some dry air and wind shear. Uh, that's going to get up into that southwest uh, Atlantic area that we will need to watch to see if it can try to become something uh, by next week. But then a new wave off of Africa. Here we go around 10 days from now kind of trekking through the same region. And I'll remind you, the more of these waves we get, the more they're going to help out the waves behind them. Uh, they continue to moisten up things out in front of the next wave, and it's kind of a bit of a feedback loop in a way uh, that makes things a little bit more favorable out here. Also, wind shear, uh, something we've been talking about, still looks to come down here by you know the first half of August. You can see here, uh, this is right around the 10th or so of August, and uh, a lot of blue showing up, that meaning below average wind shear values for a big chunk of the Atlantic here. We'll see if something can go, go in and see if we can lock in on a specific thing. I'll show you this. Uh, final thing I'll show you today before uh, I let you go is the Google AI model. This is, again, kind of the new kid on the block. And uh, this also, this is nine days from now. Notice a lot of members here in this suite of models showing something 
with that secondary wave uh, that I just showed you on some of the other models uh, getting going. And then by the time we keep it going ahead, yeah, a lot of members show something generally approaching the islands or the United States uh, by the middle of the month. So nothing to freak out about. Don't go running off saying GM said a big hurricane's coming, but uh, it's that time of the year. I'm always going to have a tropics update no matter what. And I'll always show you where something could form, uh, even if it does or doesn't. It's always best to you know always keep you weather wise and heads up here. And we'll continue to do that on the channel like I have been. All right, folks, that's all I got for you. Sorry about not being here the past two days. I'll be completely honest with you. I just need a little bit of a break. Uh, I needed to kind of enjoy a couple days to not be at actual work and then this work as well uh, to just kind of go out and get some fresh air. So I did that and uh, back at it again today and uh, hopefully we'll have these videos coming out uh, every day for the foreseeable future but looking forward to that fall air and I'm sure many of you are as well too all right y'all have a great one stay safe and I'll see you all tomorrow